2022 has already primed itself to be one of the best years for gaming in recent memory. In freaking three and a half months, we've already had massively successful titles released like Horizon Forbidden West, Pokemon Arceus, Dying Light 2, and the probable Game of the Year winner, Elden Ring. With so many top tier titles, there's bound to be some that get lost in the gaming shadow realm. But just because a game isn't talked about doesn't mean that it's bad, as is the case for this title. No, in fact, I'd say this is the most underrated game of the year so far, and it very well could stay that way through all of 2022. Ghostwire Tokyo was a game that I had on my radar ever since its reveal at E3 2019. I saw it and immediately had no fucking clue what was going on, but it looked cool. Fast forward to February of this year, and we finally got to see some gameplay. I didn't really know what to think. On one hand, the visuals looked insane, but the gameplay just wasn't hitting. It honestly looked pretty bad. I was conflicted on whether or not to buy the game on release because of the possibility of not enjoying it. So I pulled the six brain cells I had together and came up with a plan. I would wait a couple of days and then look at the reviews. Genius, I know. And when that time came around, wouldn't you know it? Good reviews. So for those who might not know, what is Ghostwire Tokyo? I have no fucking clue. The best I can do to describe it is cyberpunk meets Doctor Strange meets Ghost Runner meets Watch Dogs meets Slender Man meets Japan. It takes little things from a ton of different games but feels very unique. It's familiar but fresh. We play as Akito, a guy who uh yeah, he's dead. This is gonna have spoilers, so if you're wanting to play for yourself, skip ahead to this time. So Akito is dead from what appears to be some sort of car crash. We're never actually told, but then we're put in the perspective of like a spirit thing looking for a host body. It tries to enter a living body, but it doesn't work, so it inhabits Akito, who is dead. It is a very important thing to remember that our main character is in fact dead. This spirit power allows Akito to regain some of his senses, but the spirit can control him at will. The game quickly turns into 2007's hit movie The Mist and some crazy fog comes in. The fog actually reveals itself as a pervert and starts removing everyone's clothes. Where your clothes at? Akito survives the fog because of his new power, but again is reminded that he is dead. Everyone's souls start to leave their body, a man in a Hanya mask appears in every screen in the city, and we're now being attacked by Slenderman. That doesn't make sense. Essentially, this drippy dude in a mask summons these fog and slenderman creatures to steal the souls of people. The souls are just separated from their bodies and can be returned back to normal, but they can also be super sucked out of existence. Not ideal, but as long as he doesn't take any of our family members- Shit. Why he chose to take our sister? Again, I have no clue, but now there's a reason for us to stop him. The story is 100% the weakest part of this game. The premise itself isn't terrible, there's a bad guy who essentially wants to create a new world for his own selfish reasons, and now we have to stop him. It's been done before, but it's not terrible. The ending, however, is simply not good. You recall me mentioning that our main character is dead, right? Well, at the end of the game, when trying to save our sister, she ends up also hitting the off switch on life, but her last words to us are live. Bitch, I died before you did. It doesn't stop there either. KK, the spirit possessing us, the only reason we are still quote unquote alive, fulfills his purpose and moves on to the afterlife. Akito, who is deceased and now not having any otherworldly power manifesting in him, is surely fucked. Nah, he's, he's just chilling. He tells his sister next time they meet, he'd have lived a full life and that he's gonna continue on living even if it means being weak. Brother, you are dead. I'm not dead. Yeah. He says he's not dead. Yes, he is. I'm not. He isn't. You should not be living as you already committed not live. The further you progress into the story, the more holes you see in the writing, and then at the end, it just full on contradicts itself. Really sold the game there, Tony. Gonna pick up a copy today, but... Honestly, none of that matters because the game is absolutely gorgeous and a blast to play. This has to be one of the best aesthetics for a game I've seen ever. Kinda reminds me if Bright Memory actually had a development team instead of just being one dude. The obvious connection there being that both games are created in Unreal Engine 4 and there's some similar power leveling concepts. And if you don't know what Bright Memory is, <laughs> well, I made a video on it, you could, you know, you could, you could watch if, if, if you want. First off, the world that takes place mostly in Shinjuku has this super 
supernatural, techy, folky vibe. The fog makes everything feel very ominous, and the roaming Slenderman are pretty creepy, but it still has the massive neon lights and buildings you think of in Japan. But some of these other shots, I, I, I don't even know how to describe. It's like watching Inception on an acid trip. They give off very otherworldly vibes. You know, you could be running in a hall and chairs or papers block off a route, or you could appear in a lake with flowers, you know, have a traditional dragon moving on a wall, or doors that transport you to a completely different location. There's so many incredible and weird shots that add this additional layer of artistry that makes playing the game quite a joy. Never once was I in an area and I thought, yeah, it's kinda meh. Akito's whole appearance with the smoke coming from his face and his hand looks dope and the, the trip is immaculate. Dude, even, even the main antagonist is sauced up to the max. Abilities from ourself and enemies have some really nice particle effects that add some additional color to the rainy landscape. Speaking of rain, one, one super cool addition that you might not notice unless you looked very closely while playing is that some of the raindrops are actually the kanji for rain. It, at least I think it is, but I don't know, the kanji could fucking say a 1992 Toyota Corolla for all I know. So yeah, obviously just looking at these clips I've presented, you can tell it's a very nice looking game, but we can make it even better. You know, change some settings around, throw on ray tracing, and we go from a really good looking game to a fucking incredible looking game. You know, as I've mentioned, the overall atmosphere and feeling was never in question for me, because if you don't know, Tango Gameworks was created by Shinji Mikami, who previously was part of Capcom. He was responsible for the direction and creation of small titles, you know, like the original Resident Evil game. He also directed Resident Evil 4, which is regarded as one of the best games in the series, and worked as a producer on a bunch of other titles within the Resident Evil series, and as well as games like Devil May Cry and Phoenix Wright. Tango also developed the Evil Within games, so it's safe to say their team knows how to create an environment, but like, <laughs> holy shit, I was not expecting it would look this nice. Like I said in the beginning, gameplay was the main thing I was concerned about when buying Ghostwire, but turns out it's really fun. The game's actually open world, which I 100% was not expecting, but I think it fits well. We have varying points of interest on the map and a plethora of side quests to accompany our main story. The map will expand and new areas will unlock once we removed the fog by cleansing Tory gates around the city. We can go to stores and purchase a variety of goods from cats. I mean, sure, or even deliver items to the Drip Cat for some nice rewards. You can outsmart a cat but with a cucumber before sucking its life force away, and before he can even enjoy the cuke. Apparently, some raccoons are scattered around the city. Why? I, 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 don't, I don't know, but they are, and sometimes they're in a trash bin or posing as a vending machine or a satellite. Side quests were surprisingly really fleshed out and are fun to complete. Everything that we interact with in the game is in a spirit form, you know, because the, the fog sucked them away, but we end up taking requests from them so that they can finally move on. Enter a subway car and get transported to a creepy ass lake, or help a spirit who's shitting his braids out and doesn't have any toilet paper. Exploring feels good, we can move around on the ground or use Tangus to take to the rooftops and our glide ability to traverse between buildings. The only thing that feels pretty monotonous is the collecting of souls. One of our side objectives is to absorb souls with Katashiro paper and submit them into some future funky telephone booth. There's a total of 240,000 souls and through my playthrough I only ended with like 93,000 or something. You end up just running around and holding right click to suck them in. There are some spirits though that are actually locked and you have to perform some sort of, you know, hand sign jutsu to unlock it before being able to absorb them. And you can also do this with certain enemies in the game, which I thought, I was like, oh, that's sick. We get to interact, move our mouse in a certain direction. But I would have liked it if there was like some challenge to it or you have to do specific timing because it's really you just move on whatever the line direction is and then you just spam your mouse for it to perform the seal. It would have been cool if there was some more interaction action on there, but you know, I, I liked where they were going with it. The combat and leveling system was another thing that I enjoyed. You know, it's just a basic level system. You gain levels and get skill points that you can put into three different categories. You can also find case files that will give you skill points and help level up faster. The abilities tab has the most passive increases, like more damage on downed enemies or faster core grabs. The equipment tab will have some buffs for things like your bow or maybe increase the amount of health that food restores. The ethereal weaving tab is the most important as it's our main method of fighting. We 
have three different weaving abilities, wind, water, and fire. Wind is kind of the most balanced and has these little green balls that you shoot out. Water has virtually no range, but is good if you're getting rushed by a large group of enemies. Fire was easily the best in my opinion. It takes long to charge, but it does massive damage and AOE, making it super easy to take out tough enemies or a large group. Leveling these up is definitely a priority and it helps out a lot in combat. Speaking of combat, solid. Oh, look, an eagle. <laughs> We don't have an insane number of enemy types, but enough to where each fight doesn't feel too repetitive. I did briefly mention our ethereal weaving, but if I'ma be honest, the bow fucking bodies people. A headshot on most enemies is a one-shot kill and it pierces through the umbrellas. You don't want to always use it though as you're limited with your arrows and especially when you got the whole gang after you. The normal Slenderman looking enemies are pretty simple to deal with, but then sometimes you know you have Frost Bitch, Scissor Lady, Floating Sheet, or whatever the fuck this is coming after you and you can make fights pretty hectic. You have to keep track of what abilities you're using because there isn't an infinite supply. If you run out, you'll have to either defeat enemies or crush matter to gain some ether back. There's a block system, which is nice. You only negate all damage if you perform a perfect block, but you can also block while attacking. Honestly, didn't use it that much, but it was nice to have the option when needed. But let's say you're overrunning, don't know what to do, you know, on the brink of death. That's where the link comes into play. If we charge our meter up enough, we can get a massive stat boost and obliterate everything in sight. Plus, the shit lasts like a minute, so you should have no issue killing everything in that time. The only thing that got me tight in I was really upset, was that there's this mission where we have to acquire parts to repair a motorcycle, and when all said and done, we don't even get to drive it. It's just a cutscene, and then, and then the shit explodes. Well, that was a load of shit. It also feels like the game ends too early. The pacing in the first half, or, you know, honestly, three quarters is pretty good, but then it just amps up and drastically you're done before you even know it. Even after beating the game, there is plenty to do on the map, so I could load back in and still have another 10 to 20 hours of content. Perhaps the biggest determinant for people buying this game is price. This is a full $60 release. With so many games releasing, you really have to pick and choose which ones you're going to play because shits ain't cheap. If I'm being honest, I don't think the game is worth $60. I would place it more towards the $40 price line. You could totally put like 50 hours in, but if you just went through the story, it would take maybe 10 max. I know I mentioned that I could probably go back in and put another 10 to 20 hours in, but there's really no reason to go back after completing the game. If you're going for 100% achievements, you know, I understand, but there's, you know, no new game plus, no hidden rewards, nothing. However, I still recommend playing Ghostware if you get the chance because it is a super fun and unique concept, and just the art aesthetic alone is something that you need to check out. Just you know, maybe wait for a sale. If you guys played Ghostwire, what did you think of it? Was it good? Was it trash? I'd love to know in the comments. I'm going to try my best to play as many new games as possible this year because you never know when you'll stumble across a title like this that genuinely surprises you. If you enjoyed, be sure to leave a like, comment, and subscribe. I hope to bring a ton more videos for you to enjoy in the future. I'll see you all in the next one. Peace.